So my friend Ben at Grammaticus Books does this challenge with Steve Donahue. They name their top 10 movies in a certain category. They call it the Bro Tube Challenge. Ben gave me a heads up on their next category, and so I'm going to join in. It's the top 10 historical dramas that's in films. Of course, being above Vintage SF, the first one I thought of was Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. SF and historical drama. I didn't think that's what Dramaticus, Grammaticus, or Steve Donahue were really thinking. Of course, I'm limited by those films that I've seen. So that means Battleship Potemkin from 1925 is out. No way. Oh, and I almost forgot. We're looking at historical periods pre-Vietnam War. So here are my top 10 historical movies. At number 10, we have a film by Philip Kaufman from 1983, and it's based on a book of the same name by Tom Wolfe in 1979, The Right Stuff. This film follows U.S. test pilots, especially Chuck Yeager, as they seek to break the sound barrier, but the Soviet Union has beat U.S. to space with Sputnik. Now the race is on to get humans into space. This is the story of those test pilots and the start of NASA and its astronaut program. This film is exciting and thrilling. We get to experience that need for speed, and then the race to space. There are a lot of actors we would consider character actors who had this as one of their first roles. Sam Shepard, Ed Harris, Dennis Quaid, Fred Ward, and Scott Glenn. Before there was Top Gun, there was the right stuff. At number nine, we have an adaptation of the Alan Turing story, The Imitation Game, from 2014, starring Benedict Cumberbatch. It is a film about World War II and breaking the Enigma Code of the Germans. A British man, Alan Turing, is sent for by Bletchley Park. They are cryptographers there trying to break the Enigma Code of the Germans. Turing invents a machine, a computer, to break this code. That is the core of the story, but this is a biography, so we see a little bit of his beginnings, and we also see a very tragic end. Cumberbatch is excellent in this film. Intrigue, espionage, and the birth of the computer. At number eight, we have a film about the Holocaust in World War II. From 2008, The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. This is a tale of friendship in a time of unbearable cruelty. The son of a German officer befriends a boy across the fence in a concentration camp in Poland. This tragic tale will stay with you for a long time. At number seven, we have a Martin Scorsese film from 2002 starring Leonardo DiCaprio, Daniel Day-Lewis, and Cameron Diaz. Gangs of New York. This film is set in 1863 New York, where there are Catholic and Protestant divisions, and an Irish immigrant group is protesting conscription for the Civil War. Violence breaks out at five corners in New York. This epic drama of 1863 New York is a visual feast. Daniel Day-Lewis is amazing as Bill the Butcher. Brendan Gleeson puts in a memorable performance as Walter Monk McGinn. If you want to get a feel for what old New York was like, this film will put you right into the streets and the violence of it. From one legendary director to another, we go to number six in my list. Steven Spielberg's 1987 film, based on the book by J.G. Ballard of the same name, The Empire of the Sun. This is a semi-autobiographical story of J.G. Ballard as a boy in Shanghai. It is World War II, Pearl Harbor has been attacked, and now the Japanese are coming into Shanghai. A very young Christian Bale plays Jim Graham. Graham goes from being in a wealthy British family in Shanghai to being a prisoner in a war camp run by the Japanese. Through the horror, there is a wonder in this film. The cinematography and framing in this film is amazing. This is Steven Spielberg at the height of his filmmaking powers, making a coming-of-age story and a loss-of-innocence story. Powerful. From Scorsese to Spielberg and now Richard Attenborough. 
with the epic 1982 biography of Gandhi. In the 55th Academy Awards, it won Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Actor for Ben Kingsley. This film spans from 1893 to 1948. We see Gandhi, a young lawyer, persuaded to come back to India to lead a fight for independence. But fight might not be the right word. Can you gain independence without violence? This is a rich and complex story unlike any other. It's been praised for its historical accuracy. From India, we head back to the United States to the Wild West in 1757. The Last of the Mohicans, directed by Michael Mann, and starring Daniel Day-Lewis. This is the second time that we've seen Daniel Day-Lewis as a lead in one of these historical films. The film is based off the novel The Last of the Mohicans by James Fenimore Cooper, 1826. It is another story of colonization with the French and the British, and we have the Huron and the Mohawk tribes. British Army Major Duncan Hayward arrives in Albany, New York during the French and Indian War. He is assigned to Colonel Edmund Monroe, the commander of Fort William Henry in the Adirondack Mountains. Hayward is tasked with escorting Monroe's two daughters, Cora and Alice, to their father. Before they leave, Hayward asks Cora to marry him, but she asks for more time before giving her answer. In their journey, they hire a guide and they are betrayed. People are massacred. Hayward and the daughters have to turn to two Mohican men and their adopted white son, Hawkeye. Can they get them through the dangerous Huron territory to Fort William Henry? Michael Mann's rich photography highlights this film. It's about adventure, loyalty, friendship, and love. Everything is heightened by the intensity of this film. Once again, Daniel Day-Lewis stands out in his portrayal of Hawkeye. And now we're up to my top three, and we start with a director who we've already seen in my top ten. Steven Spielberg's 1993 film, Schindler's List. This is a deeply personal film for Spielberg. We have the story of German Oskar Schindler in World War II. He runs a factory. Oskar Schindler is played by Liam Neeson, and in my opinion, this is Neeson's best acting. As we see Jewish people rounded up and sent to concentration camps, Schindler's accountant, played by Ben Kingsley, creates lists of people for Schindler to hire and keep in his factory. These people are kept from the concentration camps. It gets more and more desperate as they try to save more and more Jewish people. We see the horror of the concentration camps and the extermination, and we see selfless sacrifice in the face of the horrors. This film is shot in black and white, but there is a very memorable scene of a child in a red coat. Steven Spielberg has made a number of films about World War II, but I feel this is his most powerful, his most personal. At number two, we have a film from 2000, a film that won Best Picture and Best Actor at the Academy Awards. Russell Crowe stars as Gladiator. In 180 AD, Roman General Maximus Decimus Meridius intends to return home after he leads the Roman army to victory against Germanic tribes. Emperor Marcus Aurelius tells Maximus that his own son, Commodus, is unfit to rule and that he wishes Maximus to secede him as regent to restore the Roman Republic. Wishing to seize power, Commodus secretly murders his father. He proclaims himself new emperor and demands loyalty from Maximus who refuses. He is arrested and he escapes. He rides for home, but he finds his wife and son dead. He collapses out of grief and from his injuries and is captured by slave traders. Eventually, it leads them back to Rome and the Gladiator Theater. He will eventually meet Commodus. This is a Shakespearean type tragedy writ large across the Roman Empire. We see the glory that was Rome, but also the decadence and cruelty. The audience is on a roller coaster trip with Maximus. This is a film that I could see over and over again. Ridley Scott has had a rich career, but this may be his peak, as well as Russell Crowe's. And now, my number one historical movie pre the Vietnam War. This movie came out in 2017. 
it told the story of World War II in three different time periods. These are time periods which would eventually overlap and come to the same moment at the end of the film. This is Christopher Nolan's masterpiece, Dunkirk. In 1940, during the Battle of France, Allied soldiers retreat to Dunkirk and are encircled by the enemy at the beach. On the beach, there is very little dialogue. Instead, we have suspense created by cinematography and music. Nolan loves to use IMAX film and practical effects. He employed thousands of extras, as well as historic boats and aeroplanes. There are not enough warships to handle the evacuation of the beach. On Britain's coast, family and friends can't bear the thought of their boys stranded on a beach and dying. They take any ship, any fishing vessel they can, and head to Dunkirk. We see three perspectives of this evacuation. On land, we see a one-week period. On sea, we see one day. And in the air, we see one hour. The story is told by the perspective of his characters. There's very little background in this story. You are just thrust into the land, sea, and air action. This is a masterwork of visual storytelling, perspective, and music. There are so many memorable scenes in this movie. This has been a passion project for Nolan over many, many years. He wanted to get experience filming big budget films before actually attempting to make this movie. He wanted to film it in Dunkirk. He wanted to have real planes and real boats involved in the making of this movie. Every ounce of his passion is visible in this film. So there you have it. Those are my 10 best historical films prior to the Vietnam War. I'm interested to see what Grammaticus and Steve Donahue come up with for their lists. I'm hoping there may be some overlap as I have some great, great films in my list. Be sure to check out their channels. It'll be linked in my description for this video. Until next time, when we get back to SF, keep reading.